the Abscondo Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Abscondo Podcast. This is Mark. Today I'm going to talk about what is probably, almost certainly, the, the most challenging topic I've ever discussed, and the most controversial topic I've ever discussed on this program, but I think it's absolutely necessary right now. I'm going to talk about ending racism. Obviously inspired by what's happening in the United States right now with the, the protests and, the, and the, the police shootings and the riots and so forth, um, obviously healing is required, and, and we haven't gotten there yet, clearly. So I want to apply some of the, the wisdom of, of teachers like the Buddha, Lao Tzu, Jesus Christ, Eckhart Tolle, people that have brought some kind of um, wisdom to, to um, well, to situations like this. I mean, if, if, these, if, if these spiritual traditions cannot be applied in this situation, then I guess, that, I guess there's an exception to that, and I don't believe there is an exception. So I want to talk about this in a way that, that is going to be a little bit different for anyone who's, who's ever um, explored these topics, I think. I want to start by saying that I know that racism is real. I know that the police brutality uh, is real. I have no doubt that that an African American or, or somebody of a, of a um, you know minority in the in, in the U.S. a uh, person of a different skin color other than white uh, has a much more difficult uh, you know life uh, challenges that 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 people like like myself probably um, for the most part don't understand or haven't experienced. I also know that people like myself do experience oppression. That we do experience. Um, the police are also violent and brutal to us, you know, just in routine, routine traffic stops and just the, the basic combativeness of, of the police in the United States and the whole system, the courts. You know, I know people who've, whose lives have been ruined by, by the justice system and the whole system. So I, I want to, first of all, get that out of the way, that I, that I know that, it's, that life is more challenging for anyone, for minorities in the U.S. There's no question about it. Racism is real. You face many challenges that we don't face. I get that. Um, but I'm going to talk about this from a different perspective. My, the perspective is how do we end racism? How do we overcome the injustice? How do we heal? How do you, and I'm talking, I am talking to, um, an audience who maybe is, is extremely angry. I hope this reaches some of my brothers and sisters who are of a different skin color from me. And I'm talking to you because I want, I want to do my best to help give you some new ideas and new perspectives that might help heal you yourself and your community, your family, your community, and the world. I understand that um, the, the normal reaction to any sort of horrible injustice, such as the killing of George Floyd, um, is anger and outrage, and you want to strike back. You want to burn some buildings down. And there is an impu- there's an impulse in me that has that same feeling when I see injustice. Don't get me wrong. There is a natural conditioning of this world that we want to, to, um, you know, an eye for an eye, fight fire with fire, to show them, to get back at at the system and the people doing this to us. But as as somebody who is, who is, has been deeply entrenched into exploring and studying spirituality for these past many years, I also know the difference between reality and fiction, reality and illusion. What I mean by that is to say that that attack never works. If you're trying to solve the problem, which is attack and violence coming in your direction, certainly attacking back isn't the way to do that. And we know that from our own life experience. Anytime you've ever been in some kind of a fight with someone, you get pulled into an argument or a fight, or maybe you're in a relationship where it becomes violent and you argue like crazy or whatever. Did you ever win any argument through, through violence and attack? Did, did I, does anyone ever win an argument that way? In my experience, it's never happened. And I know that to be true because that's what, that's what all the great spiritual teachings are, are, are trying to teach us and I'm trying to share with you guys and you know Jesus taught to you know turn the other cheek right um, non, you know, non-violence as a response um, you know what I, my, my, my belief system is, is love so what I believe is that in the face of every challenge that exists the loving response is the correct response because it's going to be the, the response that solves the problem. And as entertaining it is, as it is to watch buildings burn and, and to watch rioters and, and to feel like there's revolution happening, 
Uh, the truth is that there is no revolution through violent means of any kind, through attack of any kind, because even if it were to succeed, what you have is a new system of, of people who, are, who have used violence to get in, into power, and what they're going to do is they're going to have learned that lesson that it works, and they're going to perpetuate the same kind of violence. Maybe it'll be, it'll be a different set of oppressors and a different set of victims. So now we have to get into this idea of a victim. And this, as most people don't really understand, this is the domain of ego, okay? So the world is trying to solve this problem of racism and police brutality and basic injustice through the ways of the ego, and it hasn't worked. And how do I know it hasn't worked? Because I look outside. I, by the way, I don't live in the U.S., but I've, I'm from America. I've lived most of my life there and, and of course, travel there and visit and so forth. But I know what it's like there to some extent. And I know that, that racism is real, and I know that the hostility and the tension is there, and I see it on TV, and I know it's real. We don't need to even argue about that. So we can automatically, immediately recognize that the ways of the past, the ways of the traditional ways of protesting, of, of you know, demanding rights and fighting back, haven't worked. Why? Because they haven't worked. So I want to, to lay out some ideas that, that would work, that, that the correct path to solving racism, if that's what we want to do. I assume that's what we want to do. I don't think we want to just have this war back and forth. And I think that's what's going to happen probably, but I think that there might be some people out there who actually want to solve this problem, and I'm talking to you. And I'm going to start by saying that you're not a victim, and that's going to be really hard to hear, and probably you want to turn this video off right now. But we're talking about identity. We're talking about the ego is the fictitious self, the mind-based self, the self that's based only in your thoughts and stories of, of what's real about your life, your past, your tradition, your community, your identity. I want to start by saying that your true identity is not a minority or a black person or, or an African-American or, or a, you know, Mexican or whatever, you know, Mexican-American, whatever your, whatever your community may be, your skin color is not your identity. I'm not, I'm not a Caucasian or white person. I'm, we are one, right? Uh, what's true about us is the same. So uh, on the level of the soul or the spirit or the or consciousness itself, our true identity is exactly, it's one. We are connected. And the simple way to understand that, if, if that's not where you are in your spiritual evolution, to understanding this already, is that think about what's, imp what's most important to you. Feeling safe, feeling good inside, um, enjoying life, being loved, being understood, loving someone else, having those connections, um, having new experiences, creating something, being recognized. I mean, I can go on, but there's certain elements within every person that, that those, those core fundamental needs are exactly the same in all of us. And that's the level of truth. That's the true identity. And it's not visible. It's not based on our body, our age, our community, our nationality, our language, or our skin color. So I'm talking to you on the level that we're the same. And if you can't accept that, well, then your ego's, your ego's blocking that. You're not seeing that in me. And I'm trying to see that in you. And so if, if someone offends, if someone tries to attack me and tries to offend me, I have to ask myself, what is, who, who am I? What is, what is the me that's being offended? You know, is, is it, if somebody is, is, makes a racist comment or, or, or something, a comment that you take offense to, what you're taking offense to is the identity, the false identity, um, based on your skin color, based on your ethnicity, based on whatever those, those external groups you identify with or those traits, those characteristics of your body. But you're not your body, you're not your mind, you are consciousness itself. So, and this is, this, obviously this is going to take some, some spiritual work, some reading, some studying, some practicing every day to get to a place where you live from this place. But this is, we're talking about overcoming racism. This is not an easy thing to do. We're talking about undoing injustice and creating a new society based on love, which is entirely possible, but not through the egoic means of identifying as a victim, identifying as a member of a community, getting angry, fighting back, yelling, demanding your rights, burning buildings. And I'm not saying that, that, that other people aren't burning buildings. I'm saying whoever is burning buildings, whoever is looting, um, is believing that there's, some, there's something to be gained through some sort of violent retribution to things. And I'm saying that, that any form of violence only breeds more violence 
uh, it's not going it's not going to work there's no way the US government backs down in the face of you know of of, of rioters they're, they're going to hit back they're not going to learn the lesson that you're trying to communicate the injustice is real but the, and the lesson and I get the expression and hey we're taking it seriously but if we're going to actually overcome this rather than just fight and just go to war because this is going to lead to war all out warfare with actual bullets being used it is if, if we're going down this path but if you want to actually solve the problem Let's start by accepting the fact that you cannot just have a knee-jerk reaction where you want to hit back just as hard and you want to hit back even harder and you want to, you know, take out your weapons and you want to do some damage out there because you're just, you're just reflecting this, the, the entire system of brutality and oppression that you're trying to end, that you're trying to fight against and you're, and you're adopting its ways and its ways of thinking. And the, its ways of thinking is ego. It's called ego. It's called something. It's a real thing. And what the ego does we can talk about what the ego is, but what the ego does is it takes these 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 roles and it assumes these identities. One of the major um, identities that the ego takes is is victim. So someone someone's an someone's an offender or an oppressor, and and you've been hurt, and so you identify as a victim. And and by identifying as a victim, then you're justifying your own reaction as 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 an oppress as a um as an offender. So you can go out there and you can burn buildings down because you're justified. The ego says you're justified in, in, in maybe even killing someone else because you've been, because you're, you're a poor little victim. The ego also likes to play, um, imagine a courtroom where there's a judge, you're judging everything about who's right and who's wrong and whether the situation is fair or not fair. And, and you have a, you have a defendant and a, and a, um, um, what do you call that? Prosecutor. So there's ongoing arguments between prosecutors and, and defendants and the judge and the victim and the, and the oppressor, uh, the offender. These are all, this is the game that ego plays. And if you want to know more about this, you can read um, either of my books, my other free ebooks. I, I, go in, I have a chapter that covers this, you know, what the ego does. There's six roles the ego plays. And if you are playing, if you're doing any of these things, you know that that's your ego playing that game. And you know that it's not going to work because the ego never solves anything. It never wins these things. Um, this is why couples can argue forever. Uh, they take different roles, a victim, offender. You know, they try to defend themselves. They, they, they prosecute each other. They, they try to talk about who's right and who's wrong. And, and these arguments can go on for an entire marriage, for, for life. And that's how society functions. No one ever, no one actually ever wins these arguments or, or makes the point because, because you, the game just continues on. The only way to win is to stop playing the game. And you can read about that in either of my, my eBooks, The Switch or Be Love, which are at abscondo.com. You can link to them. Or you can, you can read the original book where I got this, this, this um, understanding. It's called Games Ego Plays by Kevin uh, Fitz, Fitzmaurice. Kevin Fitzmaurice, Games Ego Plays. So as we look at the, you know, what's going on out there, we can clearly see that this is the egoic response. Um, you know, identifying with the skin color, identifying with a group of people, getting angry, um, you know, wanting justice, fighting back. This is, this is an ongoing egoic response. That, and the reason it hasn't worked is not just because uh, the system is so racist and so unfair. It's because of the methods being used. You're using the same methods that your oppressors are using, and you're making their ways real. So, you know, the ego is going to say I'm blaming the victim. But again, we're talking about a victim, which is an unreal construct. And the ego loves that term, blaming the victim, which means, which is to say that there's no solution. Because, because obviously, if you feel like you're a victim of some injustice, you want a solution. So the ego says, the minute, the minute someone like me comes along and tries to offer a solution, and I will offer a solution right here in this, in this podcast, as soon as someone does that, the ego says, oh, you're blaming the victim. How dare you? Well, the ego wants to hold on to its false identity as being you, but you're more than your ego. You are love. You are a creature of God. You are a good person. And if you get sucked into um, this victim role where you walk around and, and, you, and you identify as a victim, then life becomes hopeless and you want to just get, get even and fight everybody. 
And then what happens is you have you have people that are that are rude to other people, and and I'm going to say it plainly. I've, I I you know, let's let's face it, the African American community and a lot of the um, the minority communities in the U.S. They do have a violent overtone. If you if you you know the music, the culture, um, the the way of interacting. If you go to, you know if you go to um, you know Chicago O'Hare Airport, it's a loud way of interacting. It's an aggressive way of interacting, and and so. This this way of like fighting back, where you get louder and you play your, you play really um, violent music, rap music and so forth, and um, you know you identify with the fashion and the ways and the tone of of and the, and the way of being as somebody who's angry and um, fighting back. You're not helping yourself because now you're now you're. You know, now you're being looked at as okay. A person with this skin color is that the people of these skin color act this these ways. And I know there's a lot of talk about that people like me have to have to just listen. But the thing is, I have been listening. I've I, you know I've been listening my whole life, and I and I and I entirely sympathize, and I I believe that there is racism and injustice that needs to end, and I want to find the way to do that. But I can tell you that when an entire community of people become even more violent and louder and more obnoxious and more rude to, to people who are not part of their community, you're, you're shooting yourself in the foot because you're, you're teaching people to identify you and your community as violent, and which is exactly the problem, which is exactly... So, so blaming the victim, I don't know, but, but there's a cycle here, okay? Because I know that if if there's an entire community of people that are nothing but peaceful, like for example, the Mormons, I know a bunch of Mormon, Mormon missionaries and they're the most loving and, and wonderful people. They would never argue anything. They would never fight for anything. And, and that gives me an impression of their community that that's how they are. So, so I'm very, I'm, I'm, if I'm a police officer, I'm not likely to single out Mormons and, and shoot them because they happen to, you know, to, to be walking in the wrong, in the wrong neighborhood or something. So, there is a cycle and we have to we have to get real. And what's happening now is not solving the problem, it's escalating the problem. So the solution is what I just said. The loving response. We can talk all we want to about how the system is supposed to change, but it's not going to change because it hasn't changed and it isn't changing. So we have to then look at well what can we do as individuals and as a community? to create that change that the world needs, to heal the world. Our function, of course, Miracle says, our function uh, uh, in this world is to heal. Our function in heaven is to create. So, you know, we have to align with those two functions. And, and to heal, we're going to have to channel love, not rage and, and anger and, and, you know, counterattack and, and all this. So the loving response, let's say you're a member of a community where one of your, one of your beloved uh, people gets unfairly treated by the police or even murdered by the police. What would be the loving response? Do you want to, do you want to start yelling and throwing things and burning buildings down? Or do you want to go as a, as a respectful citizen, um, into the, police station and ask for a meeting. You might want to get a hundred of, of your of your brothers and sisters to go with you and, and, and calmly go down there in a business like way, with love in your hearts, with a smile on your face, and say we need to talk. If that doesn't work, sit outside nicely, calmly, quietly. If that doesn't work, maybe find out who the officer is, where he lives. Find out um, you know, what what which car he drives. And if you see him, you know, outside of his front door or in the grocery store or anywhere around town, you might sit down and say, hey, man, I want to have a little conversation with you. Is that all right? When, when's a good time for us to talk? I want to talk about some things that have been happening in our community. And if you have thousands of people in a, in a community not giving in to that knee-jerk reaction of yelling back whenever you feel attacked or offended by someone, rather finding a loving response within you and saying we need to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation because... Um, my, my community is concerned about what happened last night and we, we need to make sure this is not going to ever happen again. We forgive you, we love you, but this can't happen again. What can we do together to make sure it doesn't happen again? And I think what you're going to find with that tone is that you're going to, I mean, imagine you as an individual can already do this. You can also convince your family and friends to, to go more in that direction. And as a whole community of people which is a false identity, but of course, you know, people do identify neighborhoods and, and, and races as, as a community. 
um, if a if a community becomes known for its loving ways and forgiving ways and reasonableness and nonviolence and and peace in their hearts and love in your hearts, guess what you've just done? You've just ended the problem. You've just solved the problem. You've just ended racism. You've just ended the, the whole problem. But the fact of the matter is, that's not what people are doing. And in my entire lifetime and way before that, um, it's been this trajectory away from, you know, since the 60s when there was a little bit more of this peaceful um, resistance where, you know, uh, people were giving flowers to police and putting flowers in their guns and things like this. It's becoming more and more violent and as though, as though that's going to work and it's not going to work. And you know it because it hasn't worked. And it may take a little more time, a little, we can, you know, try to believe in this, in this, um, in violence a little bit longer. But when you think about it, the world's been run by violence for the past couple thousand years and injustice. And if you don't think that people like me feel injustice every single day, the same way that people of color do, my brothers and sisters who I love so much, we do. Maybe it's not as bad, but I can tell you that the government oppresses me as well. The police oppress me as well. Every kind of official, every kind of law is against our divine right to be free, to speak freely, to live freely, to have safety, to be able to express ourselves, do as we wish, and, and love others. And, and I tell you, the government, everything the government does is trying to get in the way of that from happening. So how do I react to it? Lovingly, I try. There are times I get angry as well, and then I have to check, and I say, this is my ego. If you have that feeling of being worked up inside about something, you're being taken over by ego and you cannot trust your responses. It's an irrational response. It's an ineffective response. The way is through spirituality. True, true, true spirituality as taught by Jesus Christ himself, as taught by the Buddha, as taught by Lao Tzu and the Tao Te Ching, as taught by people like, like Eckhart Tolle, as taught clearly in, the course, in A Course in Miracles, as I teach in my books. There are many, of true, there are many true spiritual teachers out there. And... And I would just I would recommend that that if this is if you want a solution to these problems, become a a, a student of of wisdom of of eternal wisdom, and the only answer to everything is is love. Otherwise, you're sucked into the violence, you're sucked into the same wrongdoing, and you and you have to live with that. You can't get away with burning down a building or murdering somebody um, as retribution. You're going to you're going to harm yourself severely in many many ways. And you're going to make the nightmare your reality. And that's hell. And the ego is hell. The ego is what people like me use to describe what, what some Christians uh, describe as the devil. Okay, It's the ways of the devil, the ways of the world. And there's no solution there. The only response that has any power, any reality is the loving response. And this requires forgiveness every single time. Let the light of your love, your truth, your honesty, your decency and goodness be what is real about you. Extend that to your community, to your family. Let's extend it across communities, across nationalities, across ethnicities, whatever. We're all, we're all one and as we do that, we're going to be teaching the police. We're going to be teaching the courts, teaching the judges, teaching the authorities, the lawmakers, and this whole corrupt, disgusting system of, of, of oppression. We have to teach. And we do that by walking into their offices, asking for meetings on a massive scale with no signs, no chanting, human beings communicating lovingly. I love you, and if you are open to this message, um, get right to me. My, my, my email address is mark.manny at abscondo.com. My blog is abscondo.com. I have books. I have daily teachings. I have this podcast, and I want to help heal the world. That's my function. My function on this earth is to heal, as is yours, because the world is very, very sick right now on many, many levels. But there is an awakening happening, and I want you to join those millions of us who are going through the awakening. And the other function in heaven, which is, you know, which is where you will be if you go in this direction of, of, of channeling God's love or unconditional love, 
consciousness itself, is you will experience heaven on earth regardless of what's happening. And as you do, you're going to create from that space, which is, of course, true creation of beauty. And, and I, I try to do that. I, I make, well, I write, and I, and I write songs, and I record songs. And I've been, throughout all this, I've been, I've been actually recording music, and I want to share one of my new songs, um, and it's called Pieces. This is unreleased yet, but it's going to be in the next album. I don't have a title for the album yet, but it's coming soon. And I uh, finished six songs already, so I'm excited about that. I'm loving all of them. And here's, here's the first one I'll share with you. It's called Pieces. Thank you for, for joining me on the podcast, and, and please um, get in touch. I love you. into the cold How far did you go Did you get there without me Susanna You picked me up when I was low And now I know We're perfect together Clara each week you come by With that look in your eye Looking for pleasure Sarah, I know you will write Not such a wonderful life I couldn't be me without you Pieces, pieces of the same soul I wouldn't know who I am without you With pieces, oh pieces of the same soul I wouldn't know who I am without you Brother, I know we're getting old When my story's been told I couldn't tell it without you Mother, I know you're in pain But you only gave This comfort and shelter Father, you work most your life away Which tells much more than you say I couldn't be a man without you Grandma, Grandpa, you taught me to play Dream most my life away Through your stories and laughter Pieces, pieces of the same soul I wouldn't know who I am without you Pieces, oh pieces of the same soul I wouldn't know who I Brian, just last week I was told How you died in the snow Still I know you're here with me Anna, you've been so unknown Still you are known Pieces, pieces of the same soul I wouldn't know who I am without you Pieces, 
sense Oh, pieces of the same soul I wouldn't know 